Good morning, this is Pastor Ron again with Manna Online on Monday morning. And we've been talking the last couple of weeks about the uncertainties in life. And oh my goodness, are there a ton out there? It seems like they've been just exploding um, and demanding our attention, you know. Am I going to get this virus? What do I have to do to protect myself? You know, am I going to have a job? Can I pay my mortgage? How do I feed my family? And the list goes on and on and on. And so uncertainties create this fear and anxiety in our lives, but yet there is the certainty in life that brings peace. And that's what I want to continue to talk about today is the greatest certainty in all of life. But first, let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the peace that comes. You acknowledge yourself by name as the Prince of Peace so that we might know that there is hope and assurance and confidence that we do not have to fear but know that there is something that you bless us with called perfect love and uniquely it's perfect love that casts out fear and so lord won't you fill us today as we study in your word with your perfect love that would cast out any fear due to circumstances but that our certainty, our greatest certainty in all of life is our confidence in who you are. Thank you as we ask for your blessing now. In your name we pray. Amen. So that's what we've been talking about, the greatest certainty in all of life, rather than focusing on the uncertainties, is the greatest certainty. And what I've said before is, is that I believe that it's two parts, is, is who is God and what is his plan of salvation? So we've been looking at Isaiah chapter 43, beginning verse 10, and it says, in summary, Besides me, no God was formed, nor shall there be after me. I, I am the Lord, and besides me, there is no Savior. In chapter 44, verse um, 6, it says, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel. So the King of the Jews is saying this, that he's the Redeemer the Lord of hosts. He created all of the hosts of heaven and that he is the first and the last. Besides me, there is no God. There is no God before him. There will be no God after him. And then in Isaiah 45, he goes on and, and trust me, folks, there's so much more in these chapters that God says about himself. Check it out. It's worth it. But I love some of these passages that we've been looking at for verse 18. For thus says the Lord who created the heavens, He is God. God created the heavens. Then it goes on and says, who formed the earth and made it. God established the earth and its incredible ability, its ecosystem, if you will, that we use in terms of ter terminology that says, no, it's a, it's a planet of life. And in fact, it says, he did not create it empty. He formed it to be inhabited. Well, I think it is inhabited <laughs> with life, um, something that he is all about. He is the author of life. Um, but yet he declares in verse 18 in chapter 45 of Isaiah, I am the Lord and there is no other. I love what he says next in verse 19. I did not speak in secret in a land of darkness. I did not say to the offspring of Jacob, seek me in vain. No, God has made himself very well known using a man by the name of Abraham who had a son by the name of Isaac, who had a son by the name of Jacob, who had 12 sons, who became the 12 tribes of Israel. He communicated through this message, through their lives, He is God. Now, I think it's quite interesting that in the end of that verse 19, it says, I, the Lord, speak the truth. I declare what is right. He doesn't speak a truth. No, he's declaring that he speaks the truth. And I think that it's quite profound, um, but very correct and revealing that Jesus, when he's telling his disciples, don't be anxious, don't be fearful, believe in God, believe also in me. Um, and, and, and so that's recorded for us in John chapter 14, but in particular in verse 6, six he, Jesus declares himself, he says, I am Mm, sound familiar? The way, the truth, and the life. 
and no man comes to the Father but through me. Jesus is declaring himself as God very plainly that he is truth and his words are truth, not a truth, the truth, and he is the way of life. And again, last week we talked about verses 22 through 23. It says, turn to me and be saved all the ends of the earth. This isn't just for the Israelites. This is for all the, the people of the earth. That's, but he used those people to bring his message of truth through. And of course, his message, as we looked at last week, is the same as what was described here in verses 22 and 23. He says, um, turn to me and be saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn from my mouth has gone out in righteousness, righteousness a word that shall not return. I love that. A word that shall not return. In John's gospel, in John chapter 1, he says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In verse 14, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. That's who Jesus is. He's the one that's being declared. And it says then, to me, to him, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear allegiance. Um, and of course, we looked at, at Philippians chapter 2. Um, the abbreviated portion is, is, begins in verse 8, and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Yahweh to the glory of God the Father. He is so clearly identified. He is the one who became obedient to the point of death on a cross for a purpose, as it's described very clearly for us in Colossians chapter 1. It says in verse 13, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness, not just from separation, but also from confusion and ignorance and error about who He is. He's declaring Himself. Um, and he saved us, transferring us to a kingdom of beloved sons. So we come out of darkness and into the kingdom. We become subjects of the Son, Jesus, the Son of God. It's all about him, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness is not something that we earn. Forgiveness, according to the Jesus of this Bible, the God of this Bible, is something that he gives as a gift. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, that no man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. God says, I have a gift. And when Jesus, as we just celebrated this last weekend, that the crucifixion that on the cross, he said, it is finished. It's a complete work of God. So very quickly here in our last couple of moments, I'm going to read verse 15 through 20. It says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Not meaning He was created. He's preeminent. He has the position. For by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And through him, to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. That's what God did for us, is God brought peace to us because we are men of sin. God redeemed us from being men of sin, that we might be men of his son's kingdom and have peace with him. That invitation is available to any one of you that have not received Christ, or maybe you have wandered from Christ, and it's time to get right. And it's this simple. 
It just says, Dear Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. I believe that you rose from the grave and that you're alive. And so I now confess my sin. Forgive me my sin, O oh God. And now I invite you to come into my life to be my Lord and my Savior and bring me peace. God bless you all, and thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week.